Hey everybody, this is Try Dying to Live here with me. It's me. Wow. Hey, and this is actually a very special video. I got it all dressed up for it just for you. Got my uh, Earl Grey tea here just for you. And uh, the special is 100 videos uh, that are currently, I guess you'd call them public. I've got some private ones that I've used for other things, but I've got 100 videos that are public. I've got 5,000 subscribers and I've got one million video views and it's all thanks to you. Thanks. Thanks guys. Thanks for being so awesome. Um, and so if something as a special treat, uh, something you guys have been asking for, kind of questioning about to say, hey, you do a video with you in it? Lo and behold, here I am. Uh, and so uh, this is this is a, a sort of a little special video, something a very little different. Uh, first of all, I thank you all for your uh, well wishes. Uh, a lot of you guys, or some of you guys may not know, uh, that I've actually been pretty sick lately. Uh, I had a pretty bad case of pneumonia lasted uh, about a month, and so it's hard to talk and breathe and important things like that. Um, and so uh, this became sort of a, a low priority, also some busy things at work and all that. Uh, but I hope to do some more stuff, fun uh, uh, things like this, and, and of course getting back to KSP, maybe a little Minecraft also. Um, but the main topic of this, uh, besides saying thank you to everyone for uh, all the video views and all the well wishes, is uh, I'm going to share a little bit of my... Um, ideas for KSP. Now that's not to say like this is what I'd like to see in the game if I don't see it all. But you know sometimes you like to think and you like to dream a little bit and uh, so this is sort of my um, you know my, my concept of it uh, if I were to be in charge of it I guess. Um, and of course when you get to moving on stuff sometimes you change things anyways but Nonetheless, this is kind of the ideas popping in my head, and some of you guys may know that the thing that I'm actually looking for to, forward to the most is not actually uh, new planets, new parts, new things like that, uh, but it's actually the um, the gameplay of building the company, I guess you might say, of managing your space uh, situation uh, of... Uh, you know, you have to build a rocket, but you have to have money to build the rocket. So you have to figure out how to make the money so that you can do the farther, farther emissions. Um, and so I w I've been thinking about this a little bit. And so this is this is sort of my idea of um, of of what 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 I would do if I were in charge. Now, not to say that I'm obviously not in charge, uh, but this is just ideas in my head. And so. Uh, the first thing I would do is I would kind of change some of our, our uh, situations, some of our history so far. Um, right now, uh, basically, we consider everyone on the planet Kerbin a Kerbal. Uh, but I would change that to say that everybody on the planet Kerbal is a Kerbin, um, and everybody who uh, is a Kerbal is actually part of a, a sort of a cast. And I don't know if you know what a cast is. Not like a cast like you get on your arm if you break it, but sort of a... a uh, uh, a cultural hierarchy, sort of like in India. Uh, and the Kerbals are actually the lowest caste, and they live on an island, and they are in charge of taking care of uh, the trash of the world. And so they're sort of, is it, is it Iceland? Is it, who, which is it, Norway? What's the country that wants to take everybody's trash? They're sort of like that, uh, except for instead of wanting to take the trash, um, they're for, it's forced upon them. They're the, they're the unmentionables. Uh, well, they don't like this way of life, but they, they turn out to be very good engineers and, and daredevils and creative people. So they start taking some of this trash. And so you start off in the game, you get this free trash that you kind of find that, that you kind of mishmash into things. Um, and uh, you launch that up. And obviously, it doesn't work very well. And most of the time, you just blow up anyway. And, and uh, you know, but that's okay. It's part of the fun of it. And so you, you but you start getting a little bit of, of data. And that data is actually what's worth. Um, money and so you take that money and, and you can do a little bit more you can do a little bit more um, but remember how I said there's different casts uh, well each cast kind of looks down on the, the the cast below it so there's almost like a hierarchy um, and so as you as you progress through the game and as you um, earn the trust and the the respect of lower of our should say higher cast maybe not the you know maybe not the highest ones yet but some of the lower ones um, they make some of their technology available for you. So now you're actually able to buy parts. 
um, and you're not just you know putting junk together. Then you get to put your junk in there, um, and they also give you missions and things like that. Um, things like uh, put a satellite into orbit, you know, geosynchronous orbits, and things are harder and harder. Um, and you're going to need the technology further up on the line of the casts. Uh, you're going to need you need this further technology, um, and but you also have to gain their respect. So they'll give you a special mission, like maybe the highest cast will say uh, before. Uh, before we let you, you know, have our technology, you have to do a moon landing. You know, something, something challenging and difficult like that. Um, but you have to keep moving up. And there's another thing that the casts also have is they have uh, solar uh, maps as as a way of saying it. And so basically, when you press M on your keyboard and you see the picture of all the planets and the moons and things like that, well, that doesn't come to you naturally. You don't know that those are out there until you get those from the different casts. And so maybe the first ones will have, you know, uh, the ability to actually know what the Kerbin, uh, the planet looks like. Um, maybe the next one has a couple moons or whatnot and, and so forth into the planets. Um, and, and that's important because you can't actually hit a, a moon unless you, you can see it, unless you know it's out there. And you could probably hit the moon I know I shouldn't say probably. I know you can hit the moon because uh, I've done it before without using the map. Uh, but it makes it a little more challenging, uh, and you, you're not quite sure what's going on, uh, especially if you're new to the game and you've never played it before. Um, and so as you go along, the the way you get these maps is you actually have to go visit their uh, their particular spaceport or their planet or their runway. I shouldn't say planet. I'm sorry. Their their part of the part of the world. And so this is actually where the space planes come into, into play, is you actually have to fly a space plane there. Um, just as sort of like an extra challenge, extra thing to make space planes important, other than just another way to either take a rocket up or bring it back down again. So that's, that's sort of that idea. And as you, as you progress, eventually you make it to Lathe, and Lathe has a very similar situation where you have these various uh, groups of aliens, these various countries of aliens who live on this planet um, and they also have new technology. Maybe it's uh, nuclear power drives, maybe it's more map distance so that you can see uh, planets farther out in the solar system uh, as well as um, other solar systems out there. So you can do intersolar planetary, intersolar, tor you get the idea. Anyways, so we you, you get this thing where you're kind of building on each thing, uh, but you're also having to maintain your your satellites for different nations or for the different casts. Um, and the reason why you have to do that is because that data is worth money. So the longer they stay up there, the more money you make. Of course, they run out of battery, they wear out, they start kind of going a little wobbly. You're gonna have to maintain them because that that's the way you keep your money. And so it kind of keeps your it kind of keeps you needing to. Um, have to take care of your final financial situation as well as having a ladder uh, of growth where you know it's not just like okay I just have to get more and more and more out there so I can get more and more and more money so I can do more and more and more things but it's it's kind of like you're progressing through things and, it, and it'll give a, a really cool visual picture because as you start out you're gonna have like you know hubcaps and junk and a lot of very similar to way um, some of the larger parts like where they just look like 55 gallon drums of fuel and see, so you, you take in these things, they look like junk, and then later on, they look a little more like um, American and Russian style rocket parts. And then finally, you start getting these kind of alien looking parts as you expand out um, as you're working on things. And so, this is sort of my ideas. Um, and uh, another idea I sort of was bouncing around, but I don't know how, how it would work out, would be sort of like a double cross kind of midway through where the, um, the higher casts are actually kind of. The reason why the Kerbals would do it because they're better at um, putting all these parts together, but also they're better at um, uh, at just being risky. Like they, they don't care if they blow up. I mean, they're just they're unmentionables anyway. They're gonna live a life in a junk heap, so might as well go out in a blaze of glory. Uh, and so they they go out and they're willing to do this, but it turns out that the other cast, the highest cast, is actually using them for. Um, basically as guinea pigs to find out and steal their, t their technology. So like the first time you hit the moon, nothing's there. And the next time you notice there's a couple bases. And the next time you hit there, it's like fully uh, colonized. Like there's colonies everywhere. And you're just like, what's going on? And it turns out this upper cast 
has actually been using your technology and like stealing your technology to expand and you're still being treated you're not being treated like hey you're you're actually building out of your your trash heap you're you're expanding out but you just it's, well you're still you're still you want to do the trash on the moon now you're in charge of trash on the moon and so it gives you sort of a goal of, of pushing out and you know you get to lathe and turns out you know the highest cast again is like maybe um, done war against these aliens and so now after you you know got all their technology they're like hey now you're on lathe would you like to uh, would you like to do the uh, trash heap on lathe and so finally you're just like I'm done with this and you just move out beyond the solar system beyond where anyone else would go and so you're basically recolonizing for yourselves um, I'm not sure how that would quite work out but it'd be really neat kind of a fun thing to add uh, to the game just because it'd be it'd be you know a nice twist that you wouldn't expect you just expect things to be very linear and you're just like why why anyways those are some of my crazy ideas um, for the game. They'd be pretty cool if they, they threw them in. I'd be like, ah! I'd run around the room and I'd be all excited. But anyways, uh, hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for watching the videos, all of them, for subscribing, uh, for your encouragement, and just for being so awesome to me. I will see you guys real soon.